Hey guys, I'm Sarah Turner. I'm a freelance medical copywriter, and I want to take a second and answer a question I get asked a lot, which is, what is the difference between copywriting and content writing? Let's dig right in. First, what is copy? In simple terms, copywriting is writing designed to get someone to act. That action could be influencing or encouraging them to make a purchase or sign up for an email list, get behind a cause. Maybe it's inspiring them to donate to a cause. Maybe it's getting them to comment or share a piece. Copywriting involves using psychology. It's more like writing as you speak, and it ing includes degrees of influence and appealing to others' emotions. Good copywriters understand their audience really well. They know their hopes, dreams, worries, and fears. People have called copywriting salesmanship in print, but I don't think that's a complete definition, especially today. Here's a more detailed definition of copywriting from one of the big dogs in copywriting. David Garfinkel says, copywriting is using the written word to start, enhance, or extend a relationship with the consumer that subsumes or includes salesmanship in print. This could be one of the things, but it's not the only thing, right? So what are some types of copy? Types of copy include sales pages, white papers, website copy, ad copy, emails, billboards, blogs, brochures, articles, ebooks, and opt-ins. So then that brings us to the next question. What exactly is content? So content writing is usually to educate or inform, and it can look a lot like journalism. And it can include blog writing, article writing, reportive, any form of informative content. Since we live in a very online world today, this can be thought of as websites where their primary purpose is to collect and provide high quality content that they use to inform people. These are websites like WebMD or Greatest, Huffington Post, anything that's really content heavy. They're gonna be more likely to have content pieces on their website. They're also probably gonna have some pieces that are considered copy. But here's where things get a little blurred. When content is purely informative, like a report, then it can be considered content. However, if something is written to increase brand awareness or build trust, it could be considered a long-term strategy of inbound marketing, which may also make it copy. And I think this word inbound marketing is an important concept to understand because I think it's where a lot of the confusion comes from. Basically, over time, our marketing techniques have changed from outbound to inbound marketing. But I'm gonna come back to inbound marketing in a second. But types of content usually include things like blogs, website content, brochures, articles, eBooks, and opt-ins. And as you can see, some of these pieces of content now overlap. They can sometimes be copied, they can sometimes be content. Other important concepts worth understanding when it comes to both copywriting and content marketing are direct response copywriting. And direct response copywriting, I like to think of as kind of the truest, purest form of actual copywriting. This is because it's written word that is trying to get people to act right now, which is why it's called direct response. This means the focus is on immediate action. So when you're studying copywriting, these are the people you want to study because they're really the best. They're trying to get people to act right now. Search engine optimization, or SEO, which is how Google ranks websites. Obviously, before the internet, copywriting didn't include SEO, but now it's pretty important to it. SEO matters only for content that's going to stay live online, like a website or a blog post. For example, emails don't really need SEO because they're not always up online. So if you're writing blogs and website content without SEO, your content is generally less valuable. Though in major media websites, which are constantly producing content in massive volumes, again, like WebMD or Greatest, actually something that would be producing content more regularly would probably apply more, um, SEO might not be as important to each piece. There are both SEO copywriters and SEO content writers, though I typically see it more associated with copywriters in job descriptions and such. Other important words to understand are inbound marketing versus outbound marketing. Here's HubSpot's definition of inbound marketing, outbound, outbound marketing. Inbound marketing is marketing focused on getting found by customers. 
That means they're creating content that potential customers actually want to see. This includes creating their own blog or any other material that people will say, oh my gosh, I want to know more, and they look forward to reading it. Outbound marketing is traditional marketing. It's where you're seeking to find potential customers. Outbound marketing includes activities like TVO and radio advertising, trade shows, direct mail, seminar series, and cold calling. It's really, really expensive, and more and more the ROI is lower than inbound marketing, though not always. And finally, content marketing. Content marketing is generally considered the content creation aspect of a marketing strategy. It usually falls under inbound marketing, but in some cases, I'm sure people use it interchangeably. Overall, marketing has shifted to move from outbound to inbound marketing strategies, especially in the online space. And this includes content creation and it has increased the demand for copywriting dramatically. In fact, as more people and businesses move online, this demand is only going to continue to grow. So let's bring it back to the original question with all that background information. What is the difference between copywriting and content writing? In today's world, brand awareness and loyalty is important to both consumers and brands. This has resulted in a surge of content marketing and a focus on inbound marketing strategies. And this is where and why there's such an overlap with copywriting and content writing. If you really want to make this clear in your mind, I recommend going back to the very basic definition of copywriting, which is copywriting is writing designed to get someone to act. In researching for this video, a concept that kept coming up were the differences in salary. While reported ranges vary greatly because many writers are freelance, and so there just aren't very many accurate numbers on this, in general, copywriters seem to make more money than content writers, but not always. So let's take a look at a few pieces of copy versus content, and I'm going to skip right to the end in a lot of these to see if I can find a CTA or a call to action, which is where the writer asks you to do something. This is a dead giveaway. We're looking at a piece of copy. All right, guys, so I wanted to go ahead and pop onto a few websites and look at some differences between copy and content. And I am using Loom, which is a really handy tool for making videos like this. So let's jump right on to the digital marketer website because I knew I'd be able to find a really fantastic landing page or sales page, which is a very clear cut um, piece of copy. They are huge in the industry and this is a landing page for one of their um, courses or workshops. It includes workshops. Um, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure exactly what it is, but the way that this is laid out, you can see that there's a video from the CEO and he's starting to build credibility and trust. He's telling you what's in it. What do you actually get? Um, talking about, you know, different stages of workshops, you know, showing everybody how smart and amazing they are, showing you all the different things you're going to be certified in as we move down up oh, here, some credibility in the form of um, testimonials. Uh, more information on why it's so amazing. And um, yeah, then down at the bottom, they're telling you to go ahead and join or sign up that it's free. Um, and that is considered a CTA or a call to action. And I think it goes on and on and there's actually more and they tell you how much it's worth. So this is a really obvious, clear form of copy. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much as obvious as it gets. Now let's go to a very, very obvious um, piece of content, which would be WebMD. And this is an article about how the Mediterranean diet can help women's hearts. And as I mentioned before, if you want to see if there is a CTA, generally they're at the bottom, though not always. And so I'm going to scroll right down to the bottom. And this is the last few paragraphs, and it's really just reporting some scientific findings, which makes it a piece of pure content. So they're not asking you to sign up for their newsletter or even schedule an appointment with a doctor. This is true content. So now I'm going to go look at two of my, you know, two websites that are um, known for doing both content and copy. This is Dr. Josh Axe's site, and he has basically made his 
entire marketing strategy to be a huge, like hugely content focused. He has basically become one of the biggest websites um, where you can look up conditions and get not just a mainstream um, approach to it. You can get more of a functional medicine approach, right? So see, there are all of these conditions and he is probably not selling people things at the end of each of these articles because he wants to build trust and because, you know, things like autism or um, Alzheimer's disease, you know, I'm sure he doesn't really want to be selling anything that would imply or claim that he can help with those uh, those conditions. So he has a ton of content, which I'm sure is pure content, although it all kind of has the underlying purpose of gaining more trust in the eyes of his readers, which hopefully means they will go to his store and purchase things. So then if we hop over, I'm sure some things like in this article about the flu, he might have some of his own shop's um, remedies through, sprinkled throughout the article, right? So you might scroll down and maybe it's, um, he's recommending a multivitamin, right? A whole food multivitamin. I don't see a link right here, but this would be um, an example of pretty common inbound marketing strategy where it's a big piece of content, but they slipped in a link and they're hoping that you'll buy this multivitamin after you saw how wonderful and amazing this is. Um, yeah, so that's kind of, this is a perfect example of where the lines can get blurred. Um, another example of this is one of my favorite brands, Bulletproof. They are, you know, really big on this. They offer a lot of um, content to build brand awareness and trust. And then also, you know, their main focus is biohacking. So they are, they're doing a lot of education. They're some of, they're at the forefront of this um, conversation on biohacking for sure. So, um, when you go into, he has a more clear example of this, I think when he, on this article, nine new tropics to unlock your true brain. Right. And as you go through it, like it is a piece of content, but it's definitely also it's copy more so because as you go down, you notice that number four, he's talking about how he, you know, is a biohacker and he has, discovered all these wonderful things. And so that's why he made it into this product, right? It's a nice slick way of putting in his own product into a piece of content, which is definitely making this copy in my mind. So again, oh, number five is also happens to be one of his products. And then he bounces back to something that's not his. Oh, number seven is one of his products, eight and nine. So this is definitely a piece of copy in my mind. Um, he's offering a lot of really awesome information up front um, and hope that you will trust him and buy his products. Obviously, as a copywriter, I am biased towards copywriting, and I think good copywriters could probably write great content, but not necessarily the other way around. And I think that whenever you're writing, there should be intention behind it. There should be psychology. Um, and if you can get people to act, that's even better. And obviously there are exceptions to this. Anytime you really want to inform someone and you want it to just be purely informational, that would be content. But I think copywriting is a great skill. I like how it constantly gets me to think about others and their needs. It gets me out of my own head. And as long as you're backing something you really believe in, copywriting can be a force for good in this world. So I hope that answers your questions about what the difference is between copy and content. Thanks for unraveling this complicated but very important subject with me, and I really hope that helped.